Turning now to your community focus, every month here at 4, we take an in-depth look at the state's job market. And joining us live in studio to talk about that and more is Matt Weldon, the head of the Rhode Island Department of Labor and Training. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So let's start with the latest job numbers, which were released a few weeks ago for April. Your report shows the state's unemployment rate went down to 3%, but it also showed Rhode Island businesses lost about 3,800 jobs. Uh, so walk us through the data and what's causing that drop. Sure, and this is a great example of why every time we do this, I say let's not pay too much attention to any one month mm -hmm. because these numbers change a lot from month to month. You know, it's mostly a good report. Rhode Island's job market remains competitive. You know, for, uh, Rhode Island's unemployment rate at 3% is lower than the U.S. rate for the 17th consecutive month. The uh, U.S. was at 3.4. Massachusetts is at 3.3. We're lower than them for 16 months. Connecticut was at 3.8, and since October of 2020, we've been lower than them. We also had 1,000 more Rhode Islanders employed last month than we did in March, which is a good sign that things are going well, and 400 people joined the labor force, which is something that we've been discussing. At the same time, the report showed a loss of 3,800 jobs. One of the challenges that we have is that we just can't see that in the data. So we think a couple of things happened. One, this is an adjusted figure so that they don't move as much from month to month. The unadjusted count actually had Rhode Island gaining 1,900 jobs. We just didn't gain as many as we had anticipated. Mm. So because of the math, it shows up as a loss. Okay. I know that's hard to swallow, but that's <laughs> how these things work out. We also think maybe the sample itself, the week it was taken, maybe the, the way it was responded to, it, it just came out with 3,800 down. We think that may come back next month or in the month after, but it's a wait and see month for Rhode Island. So it's not a sign of any sort of like downward trend or anything like that? No, we don't think so. This has happened before, and one of the categories that we saw a significant loss over 1,000 jobs is administrative and waste services, which is a vast sector. We've seen it before where 1,000 are gone one month and 1,000 are back the next month, and unless 1,000 people were laid off and then got hired the month later, that was something with the rounding or the sample. So we'll see how that goes going forward. And uh, I also want to ask you about a report from my colleagues Sarah Gernelli and Eli Sherman from yesterday that showed since the start of the pandemic, the Department of Labor and Training has paid $121 million to fraudsters who are ripping off the state's jobless program. Add to that more than $450 million in suspected fraud. Now, these are big numbers, a lot of money that taxpayers uh, might never see again. What do you say to Rhode Islanders who might be alarmed by those numbers? Sure. Well, we've reported them many times before, and actually, uh, we talked about how that number's come down. You know, the last time that number was reported was from an Auditor General report that was dated last July, but that I believe used data from the previous November, so which was right in the height of the pandemic. Mm. The number since then has come down. We had, between confirmed fraud and suspected fraud, we were saying it was 650 million. Now, because later we're able to find out many cases weren't actually fraudulent, or some of those con suspected became confirmed when we did find a victim behind it, the numbers changed. So it went up to 121 million. Very fr few fraudulent cases being paid now because of all the tools that we put in place. We're in a much better position than we ever have been before. And let's just put it in context real quick. 121 million is about 3% of the almost $4 billion in benefits that we paid out during the pandemic. All right, we are uh, running out of time here. I did want to ask you about a bill making its way through the state house sure. that uh, strengthens the penalties for wage theft. What is your um, thought behind it actually having a chance to get approved this legislative session? It's been introduced before. I'm very happy that it's come this far. I think it's going to get across the finish line this year. Lots of credit to Speaker Shikachi, President Ruggiero, and of course, uh, Governor McKee, who has strongly supported this, and Attorney General Nerona, who's been a great partner in this effort with the Department of Labor and Training. We need the tools that we that are available to be able to bring people to justice and protect people's pay. There's a sense of dignity that comes with a paycheck. Being robbed of that dignity is a lot worse than just lo losing one check. All right, that's just about all the time we have. Matt Weldon from DLT, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me.